Thank you for tuning in to the Afternoon Pint Podcast. Our show will start right after these messages from our sponsors. Hey, Matt. We're thinking of selling our home and finding a bigger place. Oh, really? I thought you guys loved where you lived. Oh, we do. Our family is just growing. With pets. A dog. A cat. Two guinea pigs. A hamster. And you're planning on getting more? Eh, maybe a goat or a crocodile. Well, I have the person for you. Kimenia Jad is an experienced real estate agent who prides herself in finding the perfect home for her clients. We're just browsing now. I'm not sure if we really need a realtor yet. Yeah, no worries. Kimenia can help you with the comparative market analysis to help you determine the value of your home if you're planning on selling, or help you determine the going rate for the neighborhood you're moving into. She can also work at your pace. Awesome. All right, I'll give her a shot. What's her phone number? On Facebook, Kimenia Jad exit realty metro her phone number is 902-880-8429 and her email is kimia at exitmetro.ca 902-880-8429 awesome thanks this episode is brought to you by strategy up strategy up is a business consulting firm led by mark zirka who has over 20 years experience in building commercial strategies that will up your game Organize your teams, increase your productivity, and grow your business. Whether you're a construction company looking to grow your revenue or a busy restaurant owner just trying to keep the doors open, Strategy Up can help. Strategy Up's boutique style consultations will help you improve business process across nearly any industry. Being a successful entrepreneur does not mean you have to be an expert in everything. Strategy Up specializes in building a relationship with you. Once pain points in the business are realized, Strategy Up will introduce process and technology that will power up your game to the next level. A successful business requires investment. Your next step towards growth starts now. Email info at mystrategyup.com for a free business discovery call. Up your game with Strategy Up. This podcast was brought to you by Dan Lomas at L-O-M-A-S of lomasfinancial.ca. Are you a small business owner who wants to keep more of your hard-earned profits and pay less taxes to the CRA? Do you want to plan for a comfortable and secure retirement? If your answer is yes, then you need to talk to Dan Lomas at Lomas Financial. Dan Lomas is a financial advisor who has been helping successful entrepreneurs and business owners for over two and a half decades. He utilizes customized solutions that can help you keep your earnings, dramatically reducing passive income tax. Dan Lomas and his team will help you transition corporate wealth into personal wealth by utilizing customized executive pension plans. Dan will show you how to convert business wealth into personal wealth in a professional manner. Don't let the CRA take more money than they deserve. Don't let your retirement dreams fade away. Contact Dan Lomas today and let him guide you on your path to financial success. Visit Dan Lomas at lomasfinancial.ca. Or call him direct at 902-209-0855. That's 902-209-0855. Cheers! 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 Welcome to the Afternoon Point. I'm Mike Tobin. I am Matt Conrad. And who do we have with us today? I'm Brian Doherty. Brian Brian. Doherty. Well, yeah. Who are you? Well, it depends what hat you uh, want me to describe myself. I wear many hats, and uh, one of which is a musician. I'm also a um, bartender. Well, that was a while back. I own the Old Triangle. <laughs> that's um, where we are today, actually. So right. we should yeah. say that. So we're at the Old Triangle, downtown Halifax. Um, you know, just kind of we felt the, during this episode that the right thing to do was to drink Guinness. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're drinking we're, some We're Guinness. all celebrating our Irish heritage in this that's very right. moment. I think that, that one commonality we all know we have is we're all... We all have Irish blood. We're all related through alcohol. <laughs> I like to say. That's right. There you go. So yeah. you are the proprietor of the Old Triangle in downtown Halifax. So I am. Yeah. And we're, uh, this is our 24th year. Uh, so next year, we had great plans on our 20th anniversary. You know, we thought it was a great marketing 20 in 2020. Yeah. Mm. That, that kind of course, COVID uh, put, the, <laughs> put the bricks to that. So we, we now have our 25 in 2025. That's a great so, one, though. Yeah, yeah. we'd probably uh, do something special, barn or no worldwide pandemics uh, uh, Jeez, uh, open opening up again. Yeah. I got to say, man, Mike, I, I mean, I, we always toast the beer at the beginning of this show, and I just had my taste of the beer. 
It's fantastic. Fantastic pint. Like the cold, it, it, it's a Guinness, but it's perfect. Guinness used to market their beer. Guinness is good for you. And it is. It's full it is. of iron. Yeah, it yeah. is full of iron. It's really yeah. perfect beer, man. And very so, light beer. Actually, people think Guinness, they say that they say that they see the darkness of it, and uh, people think it's a very heavy beer. It's mm. actually lighter than most beers, calorie-wise. Right. Yeah. Calorie-wise, it's like lighter than a Coors Light? Yeah. Crazy. Really? Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, yeah, How yeah. many calories is a Guinness? I don't know. I have no idea. No <laughs> idea. <laughs> but it's, it's a if four you, and a half percent beer. If you know yeah. the calories, you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, like, honestly, one of the cool things I think of what people need to kind of know about when you're coming to to Halifax, the Old Triangle is honestly like one of, if not the go to place for an Irish pub in in downtown Halifax. Absolutely. Yeah. So much so that you guys have a lineup. At 7 a.m. on St. Patrick's Day? It's funny, the yeah. Doors? It's an amazing, and, and something that we don't organize uh, on St. Patrick's Day, particularly that one day of the year. We just open up and hold on for dear life and uh, try and get through it, because it is the one day that captures the imagination of everyone, whether you're Irish or not. And, uh, you know, thankfully, we have four triangles now, one in Sydney, one in Moncton, yeah. one in Charlottetown. And that keeps the sort of uh, the, three the, four. the name in the frame, you know. <laughs> you and, uh, four, yeah. if, if people are visiting Halifax from either of those uh, yep. centres, they know the old triangle, right. so uh, they tend to drop by and say hello. That's awesome. I, I have to get a passport or something going, and you should get it yeah. stamped yes. and everyone and. Uh, Give them a T-shirt or something if they've had a pint of Guinness, and I must see Guinness about that. Might be a good marketing toy or yeah. Toy. They should give you some money for it. You support that craft beer industry quite a bit here. You, you actually yeah. have a have a have a LCD screen on the wall there that shows all the craft beers you have. I think yeah. you have eight yeah. different ones on tap. I mean, we love to support local local yep. craft beer. Local wines are very popular and they're, and they're very good, you know, yeah. and they're a good 100%. product. So yeah. why not, you know? And uh, it's good to support local because we are we're supported locally. So we uh, like to reciprocate, and uh, they're a good quality products, so why not? We, we're, oh, a beer, exactly. we're a beer uh, competitive province, for sure, in terms of quality. Yeah. I mean, uh, I just had uh, yeah. a family friend to come up from Colorado. They were astounded by the quality of IPAs, yeah. in particular, yeah. that we had in Nova Scotia. Was, yeah. Yeah. And even the uh, you know the gins and the vodkas and yes. the, you know, the rums are all Absolutely. being produced locally. And, uh, yes. So we have a wide range of <laughs> alcohol products. That, and you know what? We have as many non-alcoholic products as as we have alcohol products. Have you, yeah. have you tried? And that's I need to know if you tried this, Light. Brian. Absolutely, the, the, yeah. the zero percent Guinness. Do you like it? Yeah, you know what? I'm not a big Guinness drinker. Okay, I'm more of a wine drinker. Sure. But you know what? When I would have my wife loves it. Yeah. The secret to the Guinness Zero is you have it before you have a pint of Guinness because <laughs> if you have a pint of Guinness and you have the Guinness Zero, doesn't, doesn't cut this, it. Doesn't hit the same. No. no okay. Have the Guinness Zero first, or one or two, and then have a pint of Guinness. And you'll really, and I love their marketing for it because it was they. They said they took the alcohol out but left the Guinness in. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's pretty good. good. <laughs> so circling back again to the uh, to St. Paddy's Day, uh, there, there's an old saying that everyone on St. Patrick's Day is Irish except the Scottish. They're still Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Scots are really Irish people who went somewhere more depressing weather-wise than Ireland. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tr trigger warning. But uh, do you guys, think you guys must have to get some sort of special licensing to be serving slinging beers at seven a.m. Yeah, we do, and uh, I mean the you know the licensing is very strict in, in this problem across yeah. Canada, yeah. really. But uh, for that one day, it's a national holiday in Ireland, so I think they they uh, they allow it because they know it's a major celebration for the uh, Irish diaspora. Yeah, and mm -hmm. worldwide, like Ireland's population hasn't changed in the last two hundred years. They've remained around about six to seven million people. Right, that's what it was two hundred years ago. Yeah. Wow. the Irish diaspora is seventy million strong around yeah. the world. So yeah. that's a Amazing. huge market, really. You know, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they spread around. Man, they'll they'll claim anyway. It's the one time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. well, we had Obama. He's got Irish roots, you know, and uh, of course uh, Joe has Irish roots. Biden, oh, yeah. and uh, it's the one time in the year too when the Irish, uh, you know, small country like Ireland has access to the, the most powerful nation in the world, the U.S. When the yeah. the president of Ireland or the prime minister of Ireland is hosted by the president president of the United States and that's a huge not many people can do that on, a, on an annual basis and be guaranteed it. 
But yeah, Ireland gets it, you know. So, so Brian, I want to go back a bit. So you ended up owning this amazing bar, right? And uh, being, you said you're bartender and a yeah. musician. Like, so walk us back. How the heck did you end up coming to own a bar in Halifax, Nova Scotia? Well, well, actually, even further than that, how'd you end up in Halifax, Nova Scotia? <laughs> there you go. Well, funny, in <laughs> yeah. I came here in 1980 with a group called Barley Bree. We were a five-piece group. At the time, we had uh, TV shows with uh, ATV, as it was known then. Oh yes, and uh, it was uh, we were we were on. I suppose we had no we hadn't much competition back then because really it was ATV and CBC with the right. main two stations there wasn't yeah. this mega universe of uh, cable stations that there are today and we had a show that was running every wednesday night at eight o'clock which was prime time and it's funny my wife used to say when she was young she remembers the barley Bree show being on and right away at eight o'clock she'd turn the channel <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part the, the show was widely watched and it created for us a great market around the maritimes and and beyond so that was the beginning of it. But then a few years into that, after all the travel, and I, got, I wanted to develop, um, become an agent, really, for a lot of the Irish acts who were traveling here, because I knew most of the venues. And I was very uh, uh, kindly offered the job of agenting for Tommy Makem and Liam Clancy and the Clancy Brothers, oh, cool. a lot of the top Irish acts at the time. So, mm -hmm. But in doing that, uh, myself and Kevin Evans, uh, would back up the the acts that we were promoting. Okay. So in doing that, like Kevin and I would very casually get together, uh, or I would hire Kevin to come and play with me, backing up Tommy Makem, say, for example. Oh, cool. And then Tommy would give us about 15 or 20 minutes in his show to his audience that we would go out and do. So Kevin and I said, well, let's get together. And I had no plans to do it, like, but we'd casually do it on the weekends. And it turned into this year a 40 year career for Evans and Doherty as our musical entity. But for years, we played in a place called O'Carroll's, which is now a Royal oh, Bank. I and, love uh, that Down place. in Lower Water Street. Yeah, it was, it's like, one it was of, an it was, iconic spot, you know. Oh, uh, O'Carroll's? Yeah. That was one of the places I couldn't remember but when we were talking about previous pubs. Yeah. O'Carroll's was one of my favorite places to go yeah. back when I was younger. Uh, the food was great. They had, they did the, in my opinion, the best French onion soup I've ever had. That's right. Yeah. And they just, the like, the, what a great place well, to go. I, and I say, haven't had a French onion soup in years, man. Uh -huh. You know what? The, what I liked yeah, about I what I liked that. about them, and I know you guys kind of do a little bit of this, is like they would have a small stage like you guys have here hmm. and it felt more of like a, a, a jam session yeah, they'd yeah. have a band go up no joke I'm sitting there and I, I requested for, there was a band that was playing there one time and I was like can you guys play Sam Hall because I love Sam Hall great <laughs> great like Irish tune right that might have been us you know <laughs> it wasn't you guys I, I know it wasn't you guys but I said uh, I was like can you guys play Sam Hall and the, the guy the lead singer and he was like I know it he said, but, um, he's like, he's like, I know the song, obviously, but he's like, I don't know the lyrics, really. And I was like, what if I write a moat for you? <laughs> and he, he was like, I was like, I know the song by heart. Huh. And he said, write it out for me. So I sat there and I wrote the lyrics out wow. on a piece of paper, huh. and they played the damn song. Wow. That's Impressive. how great O'Carroll's was. Well, nowadays, you know, in, in, in the modern era, if you come up, most uh, musicians have a, you know, a, lap, a laptop or a, uh, an iPad in front of them, and they can just dial up a song and get, this get the lyrics. This was before that. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. No, no, but now, I mean, it's, it's so easy now that access even even for learning songs i remember you know with an lp you lift the, the you know you put the needle on here two lines you lift it up and then put it back on and try and get it back to where you left off i was wondering how you learn songs well, you how, how does a musician remember their entire discography it must be, must be crazy, yeah. after, after time you put out 10 or 12 albums if you have a you, good you career. know you, you eventually forget more than you ever remembered yeah. you know and but but it's funny it's like riding a bicycle you do once you start thinking about a song you haven't sung in years it does come back. Comes I mean, back. It, it's in there. It's been stamped on the brain somewhere. Well, well the brain can it's remember an incredible it. amount of songs Absolutely. if you think about oh, it. Yeah. It, it always just stands me when I hear a song that's 20 years old. I'm like, Jesus, I still know every yeah. lyric to this song. I haven't heard it in maybe 15 years. So, yeah. There we were in O'Carroll's playing six nights a week, yeah. like every other week for 15 years. And I, and I mean, it was <laughs> an yeah. incredible uh, way of learning the skill of performing on stage and and then we you know we do we get to do concerts with the people the heroes our musical heroes that i was able to promote as well mm. so we had the, both the concert stage and the pub stage and that gave you a great uh, wide variety of material because the concert is a different 
there's a different dynamic when you're doing a concert from doing a, a pub night. Sure. Right. And of course, now as uh, as the years went on, it was always our intention. Like we'd always loved the bar business and. Uh, O'Carroll's, when Jim O'Carroll retired and was moving back to Ireland, he did offer it to us first. But at the time, you know, musicians, we hadn't two pennies to rub together and we couldn't <laughs> raise enough money to do it, to buy it. So it was bought by someone else. And around about, uh, around about that time, uh, we f- discovered that the, the old Triangle location was available. And uh, at the time, we had about uh, 14 fans of ours who were willing to invest in our concept of what we thought would be another great Irish bar in the city. Oh, wow. And we still played O'Carroll's for a year, for a year or so after we, we uh, well, changed While well, the triangle fans. started getting up and, and we still And we played the triangle as well. So we had, uh, we had a great uh, city-wide tour for about a year or for two years. For those who don't know, what does the old triangle represent, the symbol? Well, you know, it, 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 it's the hardest thing. It's easy to open a pub. It's the hardest thing to name a pub uh, <laughs> with a kind of a, you know, if you want to be creative. But we got together one day we had a, with four major partners, myself, Jerry Guest, Kevin Evans, and my wife, Cheryl. So um, we got together one day and we decided, right, we're going to keep thinking about this. And, of course, the, a few scoops of beer helped uh, to... What was that? I don't know. This is your bar, buddy. It happens all the time. Wait, I wait, think wait. that's 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 oh, ice that's being ice. shoveled that's in. Ice yeah. Yeah. It is yeah, being we're, shoveled. we're used to a little noise in the background. Being of shoveled show. in. Right. We'll yeah. numb that. It yeah. frightened me in the headphones here. I didn't know what was going on. I thought there was a waterfall <laughs> happening here. You know, but so uh, we got together and we had um, you know a number of thoughts uh, of what we wanted to call the place. And uh, of course, we had a myself and, and Cheryl had a. a uh, an old stone cutting of uh, the Celtic knot, which yeah. is okay. the which is our symbol outside, and, the, yeah, yeah. and it has three points that are all connected. There were three rooms in the old triangle at the time, oh, and okay. uh, and there were apart from my wife, we had, there were three other partners, you know. So, and, the, the, and three is actually a very lucky number in the Celtic world. So. We looked at that Celtic knot and we thought, well, and, that's and you a kind of an old triangle. And, and, and the square triangle did not sound great. That <laughs> was right. the other reason, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Didn't, didn't cut it, yeah. Didn't cut it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there we were. And, uh, we ca- and, and, and if you Google the old triangle, there's one other old triangle, I think, in the world, and it's in Amsterdam. Oh. There's an AULD triangle in Dublin. Cool. But there are very few, I mean, around. So, you know, you, you, uh, many other bars that you see the names, there, there are dozens of them similar named around the world if you google them but if you google the old triangle i think we're the first ones to come up Fantastic. so it wow. was a kind of fortuitous that we we, we stumbled upon that at, at the time yeah. it's, it's an iconic name i mean it feels yeah. iconic when you, and each when you see each it. each room we named the, the lower room where we have music is called tigum kyol which in, is an irish word for house of music okay and uh the middle room is the poor house, yeah. you know, P-O-U-R, yeah. as opposed to P-O-O-R. <laughs> and, and, uh, and this is the snug up here where we're sitting. And, and we're and, snug and, in these rooms. And snugs <laughs> traditionally in Ireland were places where women didn't go into bars, but there were always little rooms off the side of the bar where they would serve drink through a little portal in, in the wall, mm. and they were called snugs. So a woman could go in there and not be seen drinking at the time. So that was the way it was then. Of course, it's all of all. But this kind of c- captures a, mm. yeah. a little bit of that, where people can come in and have private meetings and and uh, enjoy each other's company. Record away podcasts. from Away from, and record, record podcasts. podcasts. Yeah, it's <laughs> our third one here. Away yeah. from the racket of <laughs> ice flowing into a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So where where uh, whereabouts in Ireland do you hail from? I'm from a place called Oma, which is right in the middle of uh, the north of Ireland. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a small town, it's about maybe forty, fifty thousand people. And uh, it was a great town for music and uh, growing up. And uh, <laughs> my father was actually the undertaker in the city, in the town. And um, as a consequence, uh, uh, as a youth, I went to more funerals than I could say I had hot dinners. <laughs> Seriously. Because every week there'd be a couple of funerals a week. But in going to these funerals, it was a great place where, I mean, the Irish wake is is known worldwide yes. for... The Cayley. Uh, for, yeah, I mean, it's a place of celebration of the... Yeah. Person who passed really, and they the talk uh, fondly about 
the, the corpse and uh, the character of the corpse. And of course, then after a few drinks, uh, which flow freely at the Irish wake, but if music starts and uh, I mean, you, you get caught up in the atmosphere of it all. So it was a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful way of learning the love for music and hearing a lot of songs mm. and you thought oh i like that. i must go and learn that song yeah. so, so we yeah. uh my my grandfather was very much uh you know uh, fascinated with his irish heritage uh, and we talked about it we both have clotter rings on mm -hmm. both you know uh, and describe that for our listeners what's yeah what's so the clotter ring is uh it's a, a we both have big gold ones um but you'll see hands and a heart and a, and a crown and the the so the hand symbolizes friendship, crown, the heart is love, and the crown is loyalty. Uh, points in towards your heart means you're taken, uh, and right. the heart points out means you're not. So you guys are both taken, huh? We are both uh, taken. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good stuff. Who took you? Liam, um, just Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, I will find you. <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> so, it, it, but my 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 grandfather. Um, uh, he wanted a Kaylee when he was when he knew yeah. he was when he was dying. He, he, yeah. he had brain cancer, and when he was dying, he wanted a Kaylee because again, it's that celebration of life. Right. And uh, the thing is, though, is my my grandfather was very much a planner, and he said, "I don't want to miss out on it." So we actually had a Kaylee a couple months before he passed away. Yeah. And he because he wanted to have a big thing, so we had Irish music come in. Oh, cool! We had Irish dancers. Yeah, had mm -hmm. it in the community center in Herring Cove, and we had this big thing. It was a, actually it was a huge snowstorm, and hundreds of people showed up, <laughs> and cool. just it was just a well, blast. It's not uncommon in Ireland; they call them living wakes. You yeah, know? So yeah, exactly. People do yeah. prepare, and we've had a few of them actually here in the Triangle. So people to celebrate on. before you pass, yeah. I think that's and, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Kevin used to play with a guy called Stephen Wainwright that he, in, a, in a group called the Garrison Brothers prior to him and I getting together. And Stephen, uh, who has passed since, but Stephen had a wake in uh, Marblehead in Massachusetts and uh, uh, all all the musical friends gathered and over a period of three or four days. And he wasn't doing well, but he was there, he participated, and you know, two days later he was dead. Mm. <laughs> So well, there you go, yeah. uh, but got to uh, got to have his last wish of a, a, a live, you know. I think everybody deserves a good funeral wake. before they die, just so they know they were yeah. loved. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know? good celebration yeah. of life. Yeah. Right? yeah, there was something I heard recently that said uh, it, it. It was a just like a little quote that I saw that I loved it, but it said that uh, we should be saying all the good things that we say to people on their, at their funeral on their birthdays. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I love that, that, right? But yeah. I, I love the idea of a yeah of a living wake. I yeah. think. Uh, just you know, celebrate the life and have a little bit of party, and then I mean, you know, have a That's the old saying: live, live every day like it's your last, and someday you'll be right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. So That's you, right. you guys are still playing here, aren't you? Like you no, like, Kevin, I don't play. Kevin no, lives play in St. John's, Newfoundland. I always oh, still play, but we we get together uh, in the well. In the summertime, we do a lot. We play uh, Kitchen Fest in Cape Breton, which okay, is yeah. a, you know eight or seven or eight days all around the island and then in the fall we get together we do a few concerts yeah um around the uh, october time so we'll be doing something october november this year then in uh, march of course we do a, a bit of a tour around to, and that's as much as we like to do now i mean it's uh, yeah. our you know business has kind of put music in the on the, on the sort of uh, the back burner Fair enough. and yeah. uh, it's very difficult to to travel and and do do the business and be here you can I mean nowadays and of course after covid the challenges of the, the food and beverage business have uh, yeah. are still you know it's, a, it's still a very fragile industry for most people who are in that industry so can I, can I ask if you do you have a recorded song that we could share at the end of this episode we do that for other musicians now oh, actually sure yeah, yeah we'd love to do that oh, yeah no bother. Yeah. yeah so coming up at the end of this episode what song are we going to have i uh, Give you one of my favorite songs, which I, c I can't recall at the minute. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I don't know which CD I have available here, but uh, just give me the best answer we've right ever got. If we <laughs> recorded awesome. it, we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. If we recorded, we loved it. I guess that's the good podcast. answer. If we, if we recorded, if we have a guest on the show, we love them. Exactly. Yeah, 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 100%. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. The way yeah. it should be. That's right. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. So the um, yeah, like I mean, you guys obviously have like the food and everything. Um, I guess 
It's, you guys are having like acts and stuff. Is it Thursday and Fridays that you have music acts coming in? Or we music still... seven nights a week in the triangle. Seven nights a week. Yep. And uh, you know that was that was always our uh, goal. We, we wanted music to be a, one of the main components of what uh, the, the old triangle yeah. is. You know, music, food, atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Now COVID, of course, changed a yeah, lot of that for a while. Yeah. But now we're back to seven nights a week and. Uh, we have everything from the instrumental tradition to the song tradition, and and then you know we have sort of the stock and stock and trade sort of songs of the the pubs, you know. So yeah, they're not course. always Irish; they don't have to be, but not all songs that are sung in Ireland are Irish either. No, yeah. that's true. But I mean, that being said, though, I think a lot of like at least here in yeah. in Halifax, uh, the Irish songs. Are very They're much popular. ingrained. Yeah, in, absolutely. In, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you know, and, and it's more than the, the atmosphere that they create within the bar, you know. Right. And, uh, so we, yeah, we're very lucky with that. And you know what? There's lots of talent around, lots of local musicians who are very, very capable of doing great shows. And that's uh, yeah, so we, really. and we're we're delighted we're able to hire them as well. You know? No, yeah. they appreciate it. And I mean, I, mean, like, I, I don't, I don't even know if I've even, when any time I've come here, I don't know if I've ever paid a cover. You guys aren't, you guys but, aren't turning. No, no we cover. don't do that. You know, I was never a fan of that myself. I always yeah. thought, like when uh, when I went out to a place, if, if I was stopped at the door and asked to pay before I go in, you know, I mean, I'm going to pay for my drink and pay mm-hmm. for my food, and you yeah. know, it was, it was I, I, mean, I appreciate pers- it now. I mean, thing. their defense is that they're trying to keep their doors open too, of right? Course. And yeah, everybody's well, doing what they can to survive. It's not easy, it's, you know. Yeah, and it's another way of. Uh, generating revenue. Yeah, Thankfully, revenue. we yeah. were, in, were not in a position where we absolutely needed it. So, yeah. if we don't need it, we'd, we'd, we'd rather do without it. I remember being in Alberta and I was shocked by that the first time hmm. I cover. I'm like, oh, just going there for a drink? What are you talking about, dude? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that was everywhere in Alberta. And now yeah. it's uh, more systemic, but uh, that was what he. 15 years ago yeah. and, and sometimes you know if you come into the triangle there's really only one room where you can hear well you, where, you, where you can see the music sure. so would it be fair like to if, if people were up in the snug having to pay a cover charge and yeah. not like, access the music so I, I honestly kind of think like and maybe I'm completely wrong here but I actually feel that you know uh, not charging a cover charge you end up getting more on the other end kind of thing right like mm-hmm. someone might have an extra beer or like might get an appetizer or something along those lines sure and funds are limited with people like me right. so they're very selective about how they spend them and uh, and because of that limitation you're right you know you pay a cover charge you're not going to buy that extra beer maybe or maybe yeah. not yeah yeah so and you you know you're really selling experiences yeah, right. And that's what we want. I mean, we want to create the sort of the you know a bit of an illusion of what Ireland is like, and yeah. in our mind anyway. And we you know by the decorations and by just how you know the menus and stuff like that. It's just a transporting people back for a, a few hours, like and uh, entertain them with that. Okay, I'm a big food guy too. So, <laughs> so a little bit about the menu. Like, uh, what, what are some of your popular things here? I mean, fish and chips is always the, the great uh, go-to. Right. Uh, we, we have a, a lamb shank. Lamb is very big in Ireland as well. But we do the, um, you know, we have vegetarian selection as well. You know, we do a great veggie burger. Yeah. Do you guys still have the Plowman's uh, lunch on the menu? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we have it's Plowman's basically lunch. Irish charcuterie. Well, oh, yeah. this is it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you right. can well, have. Why do the Plowman's lunch real quick? What's that? Well, I mean, there's 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 a ham in there, and there's a corned beef in there. There's eggs and <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> a bit of uh, you know all the food varieties. Okay, I'm on board with that. Cheese. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an Irish uh, charcuterie base. Nice, yeah, nice. Salmon as well. We have a salmon board as well, which is so, uh, and we 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 do it in house here as well. Like we uh, treat the salmon and stuff. And you uh, treat the salmon in house. Yeah. We do. We oh, treat cool. it very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get some massages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and, missed uh, the massage room downstairs. <laughs> and uh, the uh, you know uh, we, we like to do the you know you have the meat and the poultry and the, the use of the fish and stuff. So it's a uh, a, a large menu and a, a large variety of, of foods, I think, for for everyone. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. No, it's a good spot. It's, it's always a go-to spot. My, my, my like my folks try to come here every um, every St. Patrick's Day yeah. as well too. It's like yeah. their it's like their number one spot. Dad's trying to get down here early enough. I mean, you'll like I said, you'll see pictures. There's no joke. Like 
the block is uh, lined no, it's awesome yeah. before 7 every year yeah. yeah and even st yeah. patrick's day we don't have a cover charge either you know yeah, so. it, that's <laughs> that's also another huge thing because a lot of places do because they take advantage of the fact that well, st patrick's day people want to get there and drink have a few drinks right. yeah right yeah. and uh, never have never will we hope yeah. i think yeah. i gotta take next st patrick's day off i yeah. haven't done that in a while you know what? i haven't done that in a while and i used to and, yeah. and it happens to be a Monday in oh, 2025. Well, so Monday's my go. favorite day to take off. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. I, Tuesday you, you could be a difficult day. You, know? you <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah. you, you don't. You don't want to have a podcast host your uh, St. Patrick's Day, do you? <laughs> yeah, we'll, well, we'll, we'll, we'll come up. We'll, st- we'll stamp the hands of going in. As, as, as the day gets on, yeah. the podcast gets sloppier. Sometimes the sense that's right. Making sense of the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the finished got, product might be difficult. Do they got passports for like St. Patrick's Day? Little bar passports? If you went around no. the city or something like that. No. There you go. They used to do it, you know. One, I think Labatt's did it at one time, where you would, uh, you know, if you filled out a, uh, got a stamp from each of the uh, local establishments on St Patrick's Day, and then you submitted that, it went into a draw for right. I don't know a week at rehab or something. I don't know. Because <laughs> they get promoted over drinking or potentially, and you could get yourself. But in you know trouble. what? He, here, yeah. like honestly, yeah. like it, it's it's a like, what. I find at least the times that I've been here on St. Patrick's Day that the culture has been like get in early and stay in here and like you know pace yourself drinking all day and eating all day because people don't want to leave. Well, and that's the thing, you know. And then really, there is no big drinking <clears throat> culture anymore. People want to come in, have food, have a few drinks and stuff, and that sort of belly and up to the bar culture doesn't exist anymore. It used yeah. to be like that. In fact, in Ireland, I mean, many of the bars didn't ever didn't even serve food. Right. But in recent years, they've, if they've survived, they have to have uh, as much uh, uh, access to food as as possible. Well, I, I guess, you know, I was saying this to Matt before, but like, I went to uh, Maxwell's Bum one night hmm. and uh, see my buddy was playing saxophone, <coughs> and uh, you know, the the kids out on a date that night on a Saturday night were drinking coffee. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah. I think, and I was yeah. reading just recently that the younger age, the younger demographic. A lot less interested in alcohol. Well, that's why we have as many non-alcoholic cocktails, which mm. are very popular as as, yeah. as that we have alcohol. But I think it's important that we have a, as much a variety yeah. to appeal but to. But that was not a shame game either. No, like, not, you, not, no, But it used to be, right? When I was well, younger, yeah. it used to be what like, you mean, you're know, not having a drink. What's <laughs> wrong with you? Know? When yeah. you have a non-alcoholic drink, you get a blue cup or something ridiculous. Like, here, wear this, uh, wear this hat. Yeah. You know, yeah. wear this silly hat, you... Goofball, yeah. and, uh, but like, they don't do Not that anymore, anymore right? Yeah. A lot less shaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a good thing. It is, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you can always come here and get a Guinness Zero. <laughs> there you that's go, right. or two, or, or two, or ten, yeah. or forty. Doesn't matter. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, well yeah. awesome. You know what? Honestly, like, thank you very much for hey, one. My pleasure. Uh, thank this you. is yeah. our third podcast uh, that we've recorded here. <laughs> I made so it even more. Yeah. Th- th- thank you for allowing us to uh, to you know host us here, yeah. and uh, it won't be the last. That's for sure. Good. So yeah, well, awesome. enjoy the day, we'll boys. There. And, and stay tuned because we have whatever song is Brian's favorite coming That's up. Coming next. right up. Coming right, right up. up. Cheers. All right. Cheers. 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 Sancho. Sancho. When the moon's on the water and the night's drawing in And you feel like a rum or a jigger of gin I'll take you along to the mariner's inn To the place where the sailor men gather The old concertina plays some shanty song They'll tell you the words so that you'll sing along And before the night's over, you'll feel you belong In the tavern that's down by the harbour So lift up your voices and sway to the tune The good times we cherish are over too soon We'll find our way home by the light of the moon From the tavern that's down by the harbour There's a ship's figurehead mounted over the door She'd heard all the songs and the stories before She'd sooner be facing the wide ocean's roar But she knows that her sailing is over So she smiles all the while with her tongue in her cheek The thing she could tell if she only could speak How the tales of the sailors grow taller each week 
in the tavern that's down by the harbour. So lift up your voices and sway to the tune. The good times we cherish are over too soon. We'll find our way home by the light of the moon from the tavern that's down by the harbour. There's an old man who swears he's been twice round the horn. Sailors aren't made, he said, sailors are born. When the sea's in your blood, all the dangers you'll scorn. For the home of your heart is the ocean. In the half-light, an old sea dog tells a sad tale of a ship once was lost on the swell of a gale. And he vowed from that night that he never would sail since his mates found a grave at the bottom. So lift up your voices and sway to the tune. The good times we cherish are over too soon. We'll find our way home by the light of the moon from the tavern that's down by the harbour. There's a lantern that squeaks as it swings in the hall Nets and harpoons and old ropes on the wall And it's cosy and warm for the room it is small And the candlelight dances and flickers And the sights and the sounds and the smells of the sea Set your mind stirring with things that might be you were but younger and single and free To follow the dreams of your boyhood So lift up your voices and sway to the tune The good times we cherish are over too soon We'll find our way home by the light of the moon From the tavern that's down by the harbour so lift up your voices and sway to the tune The good times we cherish are over too soon We'll find our way home by the light of the moon From the tavern that's down by the harbour